This video will help you solve quadratic equations by factoring when the lead coefficient is 1. So first we'll do a little bit of theory. Every quadratic trinomial or binomial is formed by multiplying two linear terms together. So it's x minus a solution times x minus another solution. If we distribute this out, x times x is x squared. x times negative b is negative b times x. a times, or negative a times x is negative ax. Negative a times negative b is positive a times b. So I'm going to add these two rows together to get my trinomial. So that's x squared minus a times x minus b times x plus a times b. And I'll set that equal to 0 since this is an equation. I can now factor out negative x from both of these. So that would be x squared minus x times a plus b plus a times b equals 0. So it'll become more clear how this works when we do some of these. So here I need a times b is this number, and a plus b is this number. So let's kind of recall that as we go and work this problem. So to get an x squared, I need an x times an x. So this sign on the constant term is negative. So that tells me that I need a positive number and a negative number. The only way to multiply two numbers together and get a negative is to have one positive and one negative. Now I'm going to look at the middle term. It's negative so that tells me that the negative number has to be bigger than the positive number. So I need two numbers that multiplied together will give me negative 15, and the negative number has to be bigger. So let's try negative 15 times positive 1. If I add those two together, I get negative 14, but I need negative 2. So let's try negative 5 times positive 3. If I add those two together, I get negative 2. So this is my correct factorization. Now we're going to use something called the zero product principle. The zero product principle says if two things multiplied together equal 0, one or the other has to equal 0. So that'll give me two little equations, x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. So these are fairly easy to solve. So x equals negative 3, or x equals positive 5. So we'll try another one. So here I have a negative constant term. So I'm going to need x plus a number times x minus a number. But now I look at the middle term. So it's a positive 3x. So that tells me that this number has to be bigger than this number. So I need two numbers that multiplied together give me negative 18 and added together give me positive 3. So I'm going to try positive 6 times negative 3. So multiplied, they give me the negative 18. Added together, they give me a positive 3. So x plus 6 times x minus 3. Now I could check to make sure this is right by distributing these out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 6 times x is 6x. And I know that 6 times negative 3 is going to give me the negative 18. If I add the two rows, x squared plus 6x minus 18 
which is what I started with, so that checks. So this gives me, by the zero product principle, x equals negative 6, or x equals positive 3. In this example, I have a positive number for my constant. There are two ways to multiply two numbers together and get a positive. I can either multiply negative times negative and get a positive, or positive times positive. How do I know? I look at the middle terms coefficient. It's a positive 9. So I know that both of these have to be positive. So I'm going to need a pair of numbers that multiply together to give me positive 14 and add together to give me 9. So I'm going to try 7 times 2. 7 times 2 indeed is 14. And if I add them together, I get 9. So 7 and 2, and by the zero product principle, x equals negative 7, or x equals negative 2. So here again, I have a positive constant term. So I either have to do x plus and x plus, or x minus and x minus. But here I have a negative in the middle. So I know it's going to be minus, minus. So I need two numbers that multiply together to give me positive 36. So I'm going to go ahead and try negative 1 times negative 36. If I add those two together, though, I get negative 37. I need negative 13. So now I'll try negative 3 times negative 12. Adding those together gives me negative 15. Again, I need 13. So I'm going to take a 3 out of the 12 and multiply it times negative 3. So that gives me negative 9 times negative 4. Now if I add those two together, I get negative 13. So negative 4, positive 9 x equals 4, or x equals 9. So in our last example, we have the same numbers, but the middle term is positive. So I'm going to have to go x plus x plus. And do we already know two numbers that multiply together to give 36, and in this case, add together to get 13? So it's going to be 9 and 4. So that gives me x equals negative 9 or x equals negative 4. So that concludes this video on factoring with lead coefficients of 1. In the following videos, we'll go to ones with lead coefficients other than 1, and I'll show you a systematic way to solve them and a more intuitive way to solve them. And then in another video, we'll do special cases of factors.